What's up guys? I know it's been quite a while since I last uploaded a video and I'm sorry about that. As you may remember in the last video I mentioned I was going to be headed on a big trip and if you followed me on Instagram you'd be able to follow along with my stories and find out where I was headed. Well that trip was back to the United States. I went on a massive mountain bike road trip in between visiting friends and family, doing some work, and then also just trying to ride and film and get content for the channel. I had no time to do any editing whatsoever. However, a lot has changed in this time frame, and that is including the fact that I got a new bike. So here I've got my 2021 Common Saw Clash, and this is the Essential Build. I feel like there was something more I wanted to say though. And that other topic was, we hit 1,000 subscribers and I cannot thank each and every one of you enough. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the support. In addition to that, I haven't forgotten, I called myself out on a 1,000 subscriber challenge. And that's gonna be coming up in a future video. I'm gonna discuss it a little bit more with you all. So stay tuned for that. Now let's get back to the bike check. So this is my 2021 Common Saw Clash. It's the essential build and it's in this awesome gunmetal color. I love the look of this bike. It's super sleek and new to me a long travel 27.5. I've had short travel 27.5. I've had the whole gambit of 29ers from XC to full long travel enduro bikes so I'm super excited that I've gotten a chance to try this out and see what the long travel small wheel life is all about. So on my trip back to the States, I was hitting some of the best bike parks. That includes Windrock and Snowshoe out in West Virginia. And that's exactly why I got this bike. I wanted something that could smash all the black diamond runs and handle the steeps at Windrock super well. Fortunately, this bike came in clutch and it did not disappoint me. Unexpectedly, what I didn't fully anticipate is that this thing shreds through the corners. You can seriously tell a difference between 27.5 and 29ers. These smaller wheels, they really just want to carve hard around the berms and just shroud through every corner. Now, you might be wondering about the build spec of this bike. It's all Shimano SLX components. And as you may recall from my e-bike bike check, I was really excited about getting to try out the Shimano brakes and drivetrain. And I purposely selected it again for the build on this bike. I think I fully converted myself and I'm officially a Shimano fanboy. I'm glad that I've been able to overcome my feelings of SRAM and now try out the other side and realize I actually like it more. With the Shimano XT brakes that I have on my e-bike, I had some concerns about the floating bike point. I'm happy to report that with these SLX brakes, I'm not experiencing that. And in addition to that, I'm super impressed with the stopping power. Before, I wasn't sure if codes had more stopping power than SLX and XT brakes. Now I can confirm it has to be equivalent. I don't have the weight of a heavy e-bike anymore, and these things really slow the bike down in a hurry. The Clash comes specced with a Fox 38 and 180 millimeters of travel. So this is a super long and stiff fork full-on free ride bike that just wants to crush park laps all day long. This particular model of the 38 has the fit grip damper and a three position adjustment on the top. Initially, I was slightly concerned that I wouldn't have all the high speed and low speed compression adjustments that I'm used to, but I have to say, I'm really impressed with the factory tune that came in this. I only had one moment when I was riding at Talladega at Windrock, a really fast high speed flow trail that had a lot of quick braking bumps that I was like, man I wish I could turn up my high-speed compression but other than that it's been feeling really good and I got to give my hats off to Fox and this new 38 because it is a beast of a fork and it's awesome that we can run such a stiff 180 single crown on a bike such as this Clash. While we're down here, I wanted to take a moment to talk about these wheels. DT Swiss rims with formula hubs, and it's what Common Saw spec directly from the factory, but I gotta say, I am not a fan, and there's one reason for that. Even on the rim, it says that they're tubeless ready, but the rim tape that came on these rims would not seal. I was super bummed about that because the moment I got the bike, I was headed to the bike park to go and ride with it, and I was having issues with the air leaking right out of the nipples. Whenever that's happening, it means that the air is seeping past the rim tape and then it's just coming out the spoke nipples. Even after I replaced it with Gorilla Tape, I was still having some issues with the tires sealing properly with the rims. And of course that could be Maxxis, it could be DT Swiss, not really sure, but it took a while before they stopped leaking. Fortunately now they're to the point, they hold pretty well. I can get through a whole day of riding, but just wanted to point that out. Comments all, if you happen to be watching, please figure out the issue, work with the manufacturers and get that squared away. 
While I was on the trip, this bike, it went through a lot. I've only ridden the bike maybe nine days and it was brand new. It's not new anymore. It definitely has some damage that's been done to it, some big scratches, and it spent three days at the bike parks in the mud. So whenever you're riding in super muddy conditions, it coats the bike and you just get scratches everywhere. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get this bike in time for my trip. It ended up showing up four days before I arrived in the United States, and I wanted to get Invisiframe or Ride Wrap to protect it, but I couldn't get it in time. Moving on for the suspension components, the Clash comes with 170 suspension travel in the rear and I've got a Fox X2 performance on here. This bike is a really plus ride. Front and rear 180, 170. It's basically like I'm riding on a couch when I'm going down the mountain. Even blasting through rock gardens with these smaller wheels it eats it up no problem simply because it has so much suspension travel. With this particular shock it's got an adjustment on the top here. I can lock it out, firm it up if I need to which I have done especially on some climbs and in addition to that I found when I was riding on flow trails that didn't have any technical terrain whatsoever. It could be a bit more fun to make the bike more lively by firming up by just flipping the switch up a bit and having a bit stiffer, higher compression uh, when I'm going through all those jumps and berms and riding down the flow trail. Regarding compression adjustments on this shock, unfortunately Fox did not spec it with a dial. You actually have to use an Allen key in order to make those adjustments for your rebound and your compression. I wish that they would have just made it a dial, but it has a nice clean look to it. One other key piece with the Clash is it actually has an adjustment right here where you can change the ramp and make it more sensitive or progressive based on the feel that you're going for. From the factory it came in the sensitive setting so that's currently where I have it. However I plan to be switching it to the progressive soon so that way I can try it out and see which I prefer. Another big change here on the Clash is the handlebar. This is actually the first time I've ever ran a 31.8 millimeter bar. I've always ran 35 mil on all my bikes and if you've watched my videos you know I'm super passionate about my carbon handlebars so I was really excited when I saw that Common Saw pretty much specs all of their bikes in their lineup with a 31A aluminum bar because it's way different than anything I've experienced and the best way to figure out what works best for you is to try it out. So this particular bar, I gotta say, I like it a lot. It's way better than a 35 mil aluminum bar. I'm not quite certain it's better than a 35 mil carbon bar. Either way, the 31.8, it definitely allows for a little bit more flex in the bar, which actually helps with reducing hand fatigue and arm pump while you're riding down the trail and spending a lot of time on the bike, especially a full day in the bike park. Now, as I mentioned before, I've spent a lot of time on 29ers, so I was really excited to try this long travel 27.5. This is a really long and stable bike, especially for being a 27.5, super slack, 64 degree head angle, and the reach on this, by the way, it's a 490 for a size large. That's normally what my XLs run. So this bike is super long. When I was riding at Windrock, my friend was on a 29er, a Yeti SB150, and he wanted to try my bike out real bad. So we swapped for a few laps at Windrock, and I gotta say, when I threw my leg back over the 29er, I immediately remembered why I like 29ers so much. Oftentimes with 27.5, you find that they're more playful, more agile, and you feel like you're going faster. Well, that wasn't the case in this particular scenario. As soon as I jumped on the SB150, I could tell I was riding faster, I felt like I was going faster, and overall it felt better. But I'm not giving up on the Clash yet. In fact, right when I ordered it, I recognized I have the perfect opportunity to convert this bike to a mullet and try it out to see if I like it. Generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend converting your bike to a mullet because it can really throw off the geometry. However, with my 29er fork that I have on my other bike, I think it's gonna work out great for this, which I'll be covering in the next video because I wanna swap it over to a mullet before I race EWS. And I wanna try to get this bike running fast so that way I can compete with Richie Rude and show him how it's done. No, I'm just kidding. There's, I don't have a chance against Richie Rude. <laughs> so there you have it. That is a full review of my 2021 Common Saw Clash. And like I mentioned, I just went on an awesome road trip with it, did a ton of riding, and I'm going to be putting out a ton of content on the channel. From riding in Wisconsin to Tennessee at Windrock, and then up to Virginia, riding around the Washington, D.C. metro area, as well as Snowshoe in West Virginia. Hit some amazing spots in the eastern and midwest United States, and now I'm back here in Italy and I'm going to be racing EWS next 
week. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you can see all the content that I'm gonna be putting out. I know you're gonna enjoy it. And on top of that, you'll be able to see places that you too can go and ride. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and tell me where to ride next.